18 Richland Street at our main office. I do have a statement to read pursuant to the Freedom of Information Act FOIA. The public has been provided access to the live stream of this meeting via the district's website, which is www.richland1.org, as well as in person with limited seating. We are at the hour of executive session. Uh, is there a motion at this time? Madam Chair, I move that we go into executive session to discuss said items as printed on the agenda. Second. Okay, there's a motion to go into executive session. Uh, made by Commissioner uh, Devine, second by Commissioner Bishop. We'll open the floor for question or discussion. Seeing none, hearing none, we will call for the vote. Electronic? Manual. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those that oppose say nay. The ayes have it. The board will now recess and go into executive session to discuss the Jewel lawsuit as well as under the Office of Human Resources, uh, personnel updates, and the hiring of personnel. Thank you. We'll return back at 7 p.m. contract issue. Okay, and an update on one legal matter, contract Involving issue. Contract issue, yes ma'am. Okay, all right. Right, we will be back at seven o'clock, thank you. Good evening everyone. Uh, again, as previously stated today, it's February the 28th of 2023. Time is now 7.05 p.m. Board of Commissioners have been in executive session uh, since 6 p.m. and we did adjourn at 6.43 p.m. with a motion from Commissioner Devine, a second from Commissioner Bishop, and the vote was unanimous. Let the record reflect that all board members are in attendance for tonight's meeting. Uh, we will now uh, move forward in our meeting agenda for tonight. By calling this meeting to order, we will begin with our invocation by Pastor Jamal Bates of Greater Carolina Baptist Church. Good evening. Good evening. Let us look to the Lord. God, we thank you for tonight. Thank you for allowing us to be here another day, a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. We're asking you now for your divine intervention, not only in this meeting, but in the minds of our school board, in the minds of our superintendent, every teacher that teaches every child in our district. We pray now, God, that you will continue to give us wisdom to teach our children and that our children will use that wisdom um, to behave in school, Lord God. Pray that you also give our parents patience as well. Uh, allow our parents to work alongside our teachers to train up their children in a way that they shall go. And when they grow, they will, will not depart from it. We also pray now, God, that you would also be with every uh, person represented tonight, uh, parent, teacher, administration, Lord, uh, administrator, that you would uh, keep their minds stayed on you, Lord God, that you would give them wisdom and give them knowledge to teach every child um, to want to do the right thing, Lord God, in school. We pray now for every neighborhood represented tonight, that you would bless it right now in the name of Jesus, that you would cover every neighborhood tonight, Lord God. We pray for every, every bus driver as well, Lord God, who has the responsibility to carry our children from home to school, Lord God. We pray that you would bless them as well. And God, we just thank you for being a good God. God. We thank you for being a God who watches over us and who will continue to watch over us, continue to watch over every school, Lord God. We, we pray against any, any bomb threats right now in the name of Jesus, Lord yeah. God. We pray for protection over every school right now in the name of Jesus, My Lord God. God. doesn't matter the creed, the color, or uh, mm -hmm. reputation of the school or the neighborhood of the school, Lord God. We, we, ask the enemy, we, we tell the enemy, Lord God, that, that he's defeated and he's under our feet. He has no power over our children. He has no power over, over our, our teachers, over our administrators in the name of Jesus. God, we pray now that you would continue to allow our teachers and administrators and the school board to work alongside each other, Lord God, to agree to, uh, to, to, agree to do what's best for our children and to do what's best for our schools. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everyone say amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Thank you. And thank you so much, Pastor um, Bates, for being here on tonight. Thank you for all that you do for Richland One. And October 5th is right around the corner, our birthday. So we look forward to celebrating with you. Absolutely. Also an Eau Claire graduate, everyone, product of Richland One. Might have heard him on the radio station. Um, at this time, we'll move to 6-2, which is our agenda adoption. What's the pleasure of the board? Move for approval. Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Bishop, second by Commissioner Myers to approve tonight's agenda. We'll open the floor for question or discussion. Commissioner Lomanak. Thank you, Chairwoman Harris. Um, is Mr. Boykins not here? He left. He's finishing up those documents I needed to okay. sign. I do think when he comes back, it, I, don't, I think we can adopt the agenda. I do think he needs to explain to the public his explanation of adding something 
um, and why he believes that's fine. And it's fine. I just know we're going to get questions about that because it's different than how we've been doing it. So I think it would be helpful for him to just describe his up. legal reasoning so that it avoids, uh, oh, it avoids people wondering. And while he's coming in, the, the agenda that's published, there are a lot of things that we, as, we do as a district that are extra steps that are not necessarily required by this board, but we choose to publish the executive session titles on the actual agenda. There was an item prior to executive session that Attorney Boykins was given some information that he needed to cascade over to the board, and that was shared. So Attorney Boykins, if you at this time could just speak to that for us as we get ready to ad adopt tonight's agenda. Okay, I'm sorry, Madam Chair. Um, Commissioner Lomanak, you want him to read the question again? Restate please. his question. Yes. Okay. Yes, Attorney Boykins, I just think that it's important since we did something differently than we normally do it and we're going to get questions about it, that you just explain logistically and legally what you told us about why that's allowed to do it, both under FOIA and under the, the Flynn Bowie uh, settlement agreement. Okay. And, and I believe I was clear, at least I hope I was, when I said that I am not, I, I don't recall the, all of the terms mm -hmm. of that agreement, and I was actually responding to the law itself. And the law itself is at section 30-4-70. Paragraph B specifically is what I had reference to, and this is what FOIA provides. Before going into executive session, the public agency shall vote in public on the question. Mm -hmm. When the vote is favorable, the presiding officer shall announce the specific purpose of the executive session. And that's what the law requires. And that, and that was the reasoning. I, I, it was based upon the law. The information was for a, you know, an update. Happy to respond to um, written questions regarding the matter, and we go from there. If a curative action is necessary pursuant to the agreement, I believe it can be had at the next meeting if a curative action is necessary. That's a part of my legal advice and a part of my reasoning as well. Are there other questions of you? Thank you, Chairman Harris. You're welcome. There is a question, and we can now call for the vote. All those in favor of adopting tonight's agenda, say aye. 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 Oh, okay, we can manual? Electronic, okay. Electronic. We're electronic. Yeah. Thank you so much, Attorney Boykins. <coughs> <clears throat> Let the record reflect the vote is unanimous. The agenda for tonight's meeting has been adopted. We now move to 6 3, which is the school board spotlight, which will pre be presented on tonight by Commissioners Devine and Commissioner Bishop. Thank you, Chairwoman Harris. Uh, on tonight, uh, which is February 28th, we do have several school board spotlights. Um, if Commissioner uh, Bishop get in place. He's there. So here we go. Richland One is proud to have several teachers who have earned National Board Certification, which is the highest credentialized, uh, highest credential available in the teaching profession. Tonight we'll recognize the district newest National Board Certified Teachers, Dr. Latanya Latoya Curry Jones, coordinator of the district's induction and National Board Certification programs, will come forward to make the introductions. Dr. Jones. Good evening. Good evening. Chairwoman Harris, Board of Commissioners, Dr. Witherspoon. I'm Dr. Latoya Curry Jones, Coordinator of Induction and National Board. Tonight, it is my honor to recognize two highly accomplished Richland County School District 1 teachers. National Board for Professional Teaching Standards was founded in 1987 as a means for defining and recognizing accomplished teaching. Created for teachers by educators, the certification is the public assurance of the most impactful teaching outcomes. Those who have received this distinction have experienced a rigorous process of self-reflection and growth. National Board certification is the most respectful professional certification available to classroom teachers. It was designed to develop, retain, and recognize accomplished teaching 
and to generate ongoing improvement in schools nationwide. Over the last 30 years, nationally, National Board has certified more than 130,000 teachers. South Carolina has over 5,000 National Board certified teachers, and Richland County School District 1 is responsible for over 200 of those accomplished educators. Tonight, we recognize two new National Board certified teachers. Join me in congratulating Ms. Emma Bell. <laughs> and Ms. Sarah Suber, right. both from Meadowfield Elementary School. All right, congratulations. <laughs> All right. Can you stand up? Great job. Thank you, um, Dr. Jones. Appreciate that. Congratulations to our newest uh, board certified teachers. Appreciate what you do. National board certified teachers. <laughs> Thank you. Alongside uh, our outstanding teachers and other staff in Richland 1, we are proud to have outstanding classified staff members who support the district's day-to-day -day operations, and we will recognize one of them tonight as well. I'll ask Ms. Bridget Booker to come forward as I tell you about the statewide honors she received. Ms. Booker, yes, let's give a round of applause. Ms. Booker is the principal's administrative assistant and bookkeeper at Olympia Learning Center. She has over 38 years of clerical and administrative experience. She has worked in Richland 1 for 25 years. She's earned the National Association of Educational Office Professionals Highest Professional Standards Certification, the Certified Educational Office Employee. Ms. Booker was recently named the 2023 Betty Blanton Educational Office Professional of the Year by the South Carolina Association of Educational Office Professionals. She advanced to, complete, to compete for the state level award after being named Office Professional of the Year by the organization's Richland County's affiliate. Again, please join us in congratulating Ms. Booker. Good. All right, again, congratulations to you. And I think we have one more. Uh, Rissa One has received the highest honors in financial reporting and accounting from the Government Finance Officers Association and the Association of School Business Officials International for the annual comprehensive financial report, ACFR, for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2021. This is the 34th, 34th, 34th consecutive year the district has received its highest form of recognition in the area of governmental accounting and financial reporting. The district must have a clean audit report or unqualified opinion to qualify for these national awards. This attainment represents a significant accomplishment by the original one Board of School Commissioners and its management team. Will Director of Accounting, Ms. Arnett Madison Edmond, uh -huh. and Accounting Supervisor Kimberly Shroud, mm. and our CFO, Ms. Sherry Matthews Hazel, please mm. come forward. Yeah. Exclamation point. Yeah. Woo yeah. Good job, well done. Right. Yes. Again, and congratulations. This is the 34th consecutive uh, yes, year. Yes, yes. Exclamation point. 34th. This concludes uh, our announcements, our board, school board spotlight on this evening. So thank you all so much. I'll turn it back over to our chairwoman. 
Thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Devine. And again, we want to echo the sentiments of Commissioner Devine and congratulate our finance department on a job well done. It's a blessing when we know what you do on a day-to-day -day basis, and it's even a greater blessing when others know what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Congratulations to our National Board Certified Teachers. What a great honor that is. Mm -hmm. And to know that Richland One is right. Uh, is, is, is doing what we're doing, and even our other young lady that received um, the national, or uh, Ms. Booker, that received the award as well. Thank you so very much for making sure that the story of Richland One is always told. Continue to share the story with others so others will know the great things that are happening in our district. Dr. Witherspoon, you Thank comments? You, yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. Again, it's always great when we can recognize uh, individuals across our district that do great things, and, and certainly adding uh, to our cadre of National Board Certified Teachers, congratulations and thank you for what you do. And certainly the recognitions, Ms. Burkert, and, and to our finance shop. Uh, and, and, and that, again, as the chair said, um, represent what we do in this district, uh, ultimately on behalf of our students and, and for them, because it takes all of us working together to make that happen. And congratulations and thank you all. Thank you so much, Dr. Witherspoon. At this time, we'll move on in our agenda um, with next um, public participation. Okay. I'm going to read them. Okay. Chairwoman Harris, um, yep. Superintendent, and. Hold, and hold one second. Give me, I got to set my watch up. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, welcome. Is your mic on? Okay. Can get my next one? Okay. Let me just say this before these items are read in, even though the individuals are not here publicly, board will not respond on tonight, not unless it's something that we already scheduled to talk about in, in our reports. Mm -hmm. But we will not respond on tonight, but we will respond to you, the individuals, in writing within seven to ten business days. Um, our parliamentarian is still going to do the three minutes. Right. You will have a 30-second warning. Uh, and at this time, our <laughs> executive assistant will read those um, public participation comments in for us. Good evening, Chairwoman Harris, Dr. Witherspoon, and Board of School Commissioners. We have two um, public participation items tonight. One is coming from Mr. David Oberly. Hello, I want to thank the one board member, possibly two, that appear to be looking out for the taxpayers. I wish Richland One would start exercising some fiscal responsibility. You need to remember that you work for us. It is embarrassing having the district be under a financial audit. These are our dollars, not yours. Also, I will remind board members that if your spouse has received any income from the district, it needs to be included in your statement of economic interest reports. Failure to do so is a violation of state ethics law. I know sometimes this rule is loopholed by the money being paid to the spouse's firm, but sometimes the money has to be paid to the spouse directly. In those cases, the income does not, the income does need to be reported to avoid being subject to ethics violations. The other one is Ms. Rebecca Williams. I am hearing reports from multiple parents about the quality and variety of school lunches. What is the board doing to oversee the lunches are prepared properly, has the proper nutrition, and is something kids want to eat? Is the district following parental concerns over the quality of lunches? Those are the two um, public participation that we see for tonight. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Wilson. Again, the board will not respond on tonight, but we will respond in writing within seven to 10 business days. At this time, we'll move on to the consent agenda. And if there's no objection from the board, we would like to, we'll do the minutes and well, the financials. And if we can do those four contract extensions together, if there's no objection. Just consent. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll read in 7 1, which is the minutes for February the 14th. Uh, January 2023 financials, contract extensions for the following, indefinite delivery, indefinite quant quantity, IDIQ contracts for roof maintenance and repair services, contract extension for playground equipment, contract extension for tree maintenance services, and contract extension for indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity, IDIQ contracts for construction and maintenance services. What's the pleasure of the board? Second. Been moved by Commissioner Myers, second by Commissioner Bishop. We'll now open the floor for question or discussion on any of these items. 
Seeing none, hearing none, we will call for the vote electronically. Let the record reflect the vote is unanimous. All items as previously stated in the consent agenda has been approved. We will now move on to the Office of Academics with our presentation on tonight of the CTE Department. Mr. Dinkins. I dreamed I stood in a studio and watched two sculptors there. <clears throat> Excuse me. The clay they used was a young child's mind, and they fashioned it with care. One was a teacher. The tools she used were books, music, and art. One was a parent with a guiding hand and a gentle, loving heart. And when at last their work was done, they were proud of what they had wrought for the things they worked into the child could never be sold or bought. And each agreed she would have failed if she had worked alone. For behind the parent stood the school and behind the teacher stood the home. Mm. Good evening. My name is Chris Dinkins, I'm proud representative and director of Korean Technical Education here at Richland One School District. And I am here tonight to celebrate CTE Month and Black History Month, what better time? So we have for you a couple of students who would like to tell their story. Because we recognize in CTE, it is all about our students. It is all about our students. In the 60s, the Jackson 5 had a song that said, you better make room for the young folks. Well, tonight, <laughs> we make room for the young folks. Because the best definition for success that I have ever heard is where preparation meets opportunity. We in CT try to prepare our students. Today we showed how we bring opportunity to their door. So the things that they are doing today is not just the pinnacle. It is not simply for the best. This is, these are the opportunities available to every CTE student in Richland School District 1. So we thank them for being here tonight. We thank you for this opportunity to stand and allow them to tell their stories. And our first student of the night will be Mr. Tyler Clark. Good evening. My name is Tyler Clark, and I'm a junior at Columbia High School and at Level 3 in, in the Diesel Technology Program at Hayward Career Technology Center. I am employed with the, through the City of Columbia with, with the One City Future Ready Program. I work with Fleet Services as a diesel technician. I love that the job is very hands-on, and I get to use the knowledge I have gained from school to do something that I enjoy while earning money, too. My future plans include staying with the City of Columbia and becoming a full-time employee. While in the CTE program, I have gained work skills, soft skills, and earning my OSHA certification. This month, I will take the ASC exam to add that certification as well. One cool fact about my job is I work with Mr. Bobby Johnson. He's a former Hayward Diesel Technology student, and he serves as a great mentor. Thank you for listening to my experience as a CTE student. Um, my name is Jordan Nostrand. I'm a junior at AC Floor High School. Um, I'm currently in engineering. I am a civil engineering and architecture student. Um, I've taken introduction to engineering design and principles of engineering. Um, I've learned a lot of different life skills in this subject. I've learned cost estimate, foundation design, and I've learned about amazing organizations like Habitat for Humanity. Um, I am OSHA certified. We use a website called Revit, which is also used in field. So architectures use um, Revit and they 
and I know how to use that. Um, helps me with knowing my future and what I want to do in college. Many job opportunities are available for engineering students. Um, we take wonderful field trips, and I'm very appreciative of the field trips that we can go on. We go to Michelin Tire Factory, and we see jobs that are available for us. And we just took a tour to USC, and we saw the engineering campus, and it was wonderful. I learned a lot. I got to see so many cool things. And thank you. I just want to thank you for this opportunity. Good evening. My name is Makaya Mason, and I'm a senior at W.J. Keenan High School. I've been a part of the agriculture department for the past four years and have gained experiences that have prepared me for my career in exotic vent to become an exotic veterinarian. Each year that I've been in the agriculture program, I've had kinesthetic classes ranging from taking care of our animals on campus during my internship to learning to do CPR on dogs. Being in this program not only grew my confidence, but also allowed me to develop strong bonds with my teacher, Ms. Osborne, and with my peers. I am currently in our grooming, our grooming course, and I am able to have kinesthetic experience as to properly groom dogs and cats and look for behaviors while I am grooming to make sure the animal is as comfortable as they can be. One of my favorite experiences about grooming is building a bond with the animal while I am working with them. The, the agriculture program has opened various work, internships, opportunities, scholarships, and multiple certifications while even growing my name within the animal world. I am a CTE agriculture intern for this school year, and I love every second of it. Even the hot summer days that I had to convince a stubborn goat to go back in his pen. <laughs> I have had the opportunity to network with various veterinarians, groomers, animal shelters, and instructors around the state of South Carolina through our FFA chapter. My mom and Ms. Osborne from day one have supported me in every aspect of my life, especially when it came to holding the leadership position as pre president of the Keenan FFA chapter, FFA standing for Future Farmers of America. Having this position comes with many challenges and triumphs. Some challenges include trying to make everybody's ideas feel included when coming up with ideas for our chapter, delegating work to my officer team, and speaking in, a large, in front of a large group of people. Some triumphs include making memories and challenging myself to elevate the chapter. FFA is an important part of my life and has opened up my eyes to the different parts of agriculture. My favorite memory in the past four years that I've been in FFA has been going to FFA camp. I not only got to connect with other chapter members within the state, almost fall out of a canoe, go down the zip line, and have friendly competition, but I learned how family oriented the organization is. Being in the agriculture and FFA program at W.J. Keenan High School has prepared me for the next steps in my life from knowing how to chase various animals back in their pens to knowing how to calm an animal down when a procedure is being done. By having these skills, I know I will thrive and possess capabilities few others may have going into my field. Thank you for your time. Good, e <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. I'm Journey Lucas. I am a uh, recent graduate of Lower Hill High School, and I'm also a freshman at Winthrop University. Um, my experience with the CTE program was very great. I was in the engineering program at the beginning, and uh, that, that experience taught me uh, critical thinking skills and creativity and actually uh, was able to expose me to a different area. Now, as a freshman in high school, I mean, freshman in, at Winthrop University, I'm currently on the elementary education track, and I'm becoming, or uh, working to become a future teacher. And at Lord Hill High School, we had the, oh. Uh, at the at Lower Hill High School, we had a program called Teacher Cadet, and uh, that helped me uh, understand what it's like to be a teacher, what are the different aspects of being a teacher, and some of the future uh, challenges that may come with it. And I enjoyed every second of it, and it got me uh, uh, it got me it influenced me to become a teacher today, especially because of my former teachers and uh, administrators that I had in the past. 
this also opened doors to me for college with the Call Me Mr. program, the teacher fellows. I was able to get into both, and they have awarded me uh, scholarship money as well as great experiences uh, through volunteering and other aspects of that. And uh, currently, right now, I'm actually in the classroom through uh, our education program, which has been a fun experience and understanding how that goes. I also want to speak on the dual enrollment program at Lord Hill High School. I also enjoyed doing that because it prepared me the most, I would say, for college because taking the classes, uh, having the one-on-ones with teachers, and just getting that whole experience prior to going to college allowed me to be better prepared and kind of ahead of the curve than everyone else. Not only that, I also have the potential to also graduate early and attend graduate school in the future, which is also a great perk. And I also... Oh, Okay. <laughs> I also want to speak on that. I'm also a student athlete at Winthrop University. I'm currently on the track team, and uh, that experience has also been great. I've enjoyed indoor season and uh, being able to meet different people, go to different places, see different teams, and just have a connection with everybody on campus was also a great opportunity for me. Um, I also want to speak on um, early on with Call Me Mister. We went to a Premier 100 uh, meeting and they invited us there, which is basically a recruitment, retention, and enrichment program to get male teachers into the program. I will get them into the district at the school, and um, I just want to say I'm blessed for this opportunity, and thank you for your time. I have a question for Mr. Lucas. What high school did you graduate from? <laughs> okay, Lord Richland, okay. <laughs> Appreciate that. That was for Commissioner Bishop, y'all. Right, right. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay. Commissioner Devine? Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, for the uh, presentation again on tonight, uh, Dr. Dinkins, we appreciate what you guys do. Um, just real quick, what does it take to become a Kate completer? Oh, thank you, sir. Uh, to be a completer in CTE basically requires completing, in some cases, three courses in a uh, concentration area. Uh, not necessarily three CTE courses, but three in the uh, same area. It could be business. It could be health science. Uh, and there are some programs that require at least four uh, courses in a concentrated pathway. It required two courses plus two others in that same field. All right. And then my other question is, do all of our high schools have a Kate completer program? All high schools have at least two programs. Uh, we also have the benefit of having Hayward Career and Technology Center that for those students who do not like the programs available at their high school, they can go to Hayward. Um, we'd like to, to make it possible for students to be able to take any uh, program, any CT completed program without having to transfer to schools. They could just simply go the same way they go to Hayward, take a course, go back to their feeder school. Right. Lower Richland also has um, every school has two, but Lower Richland has a full complement of CTE completer programs as well. All right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Any additional questions? Okay. Going once, going twice. Okay. Thank you so very much. I would like to recognize we have some parents here tonight uh, who came in with their students. So if you could please have those parents stand so we could recognize you and give you applause. Yeah. Yeah. And now also would be remiss if I did not say thank you to the teachers mm -hmm. who are here yes. celebrating, yes. Su supporting students, mm -hmm. uh, especially Keenan, Mr. Whaley, and uh, Ms. Osborne, because mm -hmm. Keenan is having their officer in installation tonight, so we really appreciate Mr. Whaley being here uh, at this event, uh, foregoing event at his own school, so to come in to support what we're doing. And this team, the CTE department, some of you were here earlier or what? with us earlier today at Hayward, and we saw recognized students who were, you know, mm -hmm. participating in signing day. So this team, uh, these folks who are on the CTE team, if you could please stand, Dr. Starks Ray, Dr. Singleton, Ms. Stroman, thank you so much. I have to recognize them. Thank you, and thank you for this opportunity. Thank you so very much. And just one last word to our students that are here um, on today, because I think it's important that when you get to come to a board meeting, that sometimes we as the board get to share with you the vision. You know, when Dr. Witherspoon uh, started working with the CTE program, I think it was Commissioner Vine or myself that was keeping the tally on the pathways mm -hmm. that we had. And we weren't, we weren't satisfied right. 
as a district until we had every career pathway there is. And right now, you are a part of a district that has every, every pathway, Dr. Witherspoon, yeah, that you that possibly good. could choose. And that was important to us parents because it's important that our children have options. Right. As I listen to Journey talk about being in college, mm -hmm. but he has all of these certifications. So just in case... This plan doesn't work. There's always a backup plan. And I think it's so important, I think it's critically important that our students understand that some paths may not work, but that doesn't mean you can't be successful. Right. I'm proud to know that you're out working with the City of Columbia, which is a, a great partner yeah. of ours. Mm -hmm. And I encourage you to, to other students to encourage them to be a part of the CTE program because it's good to have the high school diploma. It's necessary and it's needed. But we are the land of opportunity. That's Richland One. We're the land of opportunity. That whatever path you choose, we got you. Mm -hmm. So we're proud of you, and we want you just to continue to do what you're doing and encourage others. Appreciate you coming back. Encourage others to take advantage of the CTA program. That it's not just enough to get those credits, but also leave with a diploma, That's right. leave with a certification, and anything else that this district can provide for you because it's F-R-E-E. -E. It's free. Your parents have paid for it. So you deserve it. And you save your parents a whole lot of money. I promise you. Because I'm reaping the benefits of it right now as a mom. So I'm telling you, just, just the sky is not the limit. It's only the view. You can go to the stratosphere. And you keep that before you, okay? Awesome. Any comments from any board member? Because it's not often that we have our students here. So, you know, we have to take advantage of having them in front of us. Commissioner Myers? Um, I guess this would be a question to you. <clears throat> Um, do the middle school students at Richland One have opportunity <clears throat> have opportunity to understand each 16 pathway? Thank you. We do have middle school programs uh, that are offered. Uh, so we we basically have the consultants provide those students with those opportunities and exposure to the pathways as well. Because we feel like if, if they get the exposure in middle school, then they don't have to. I shouldn't say waste. They don't have to spend as much time exploring pathways in high school. They can jump straight into what they're interested in. And my second part of the question is: Do they have an opportunity just to meet some of the great students that's already going through the program? You know, now that's something we may need to work on: exposing our upper level students to our middle school students and elementary schools. Hayward, I will say, has uh, we've kind of flipping the tour model. It has been a practice at Hayward to bring eighth graders to Hayward to come and tour the building. Uh, but we're also working on a kind of a road tours where we have some of the students, the best students. From, I shouldn't say the best. That sounds so terrible. Yeah. We have students from Hayward programs go to the middle schools and elementaries as, as well. So our students participate, our high school students participate in elementary career fairs at their site. So it gives an opportunity to talk student to student about what they're interested in and why they do what they do and what it is their career path is all about. Thank you for that. I think that's a very key point for they can actually see a role model that they can see every day and really can relate to them right. and actually see what's actually going on. So thank you very much thank for you. that. Commissioner Clyburn. Okay. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. Commissioner Clyburn. Okay. Um, so I just had my fellow Keenan Raider um, there. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> my fellow Keenan Raider. Um, <laughs> just wanted to make sure you're always welcome back here in Richland 1 after you finish and complete your your studies at uh, Withrop, and I just swallowed my cough up. That's a diamond. That's a diamond. This is the Keenan Raider. Right well, but I was yeah. going to make another point, but yes, my fellow Keenan Raider, <laughs> um, after you finish your studies at Winthrop University, and I also um, went to Winthrop for a little bit. Um, welcome back here at Winthrop, I mean at um, Richland One. But any of you, um, with your talents that you have, engineering and, you know, whatever field that you're in, I'm sure there's a pathway back to Richland One. <laughs> um, right. But thank you all so much for, you know, your commitment and the, just the level of, um, you know, passion that you have, you know, for what you're doing, because mm -hmm. that's what it takes. So I just wanted to congratulate you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sure. Commissioner Bishop. Uh, excellent job. Um, also, thank you to the parents. We know it takes a village to raise a child. Um, also, to Mr. Dinkins, you always come with a great quote. And I just wanted to make sure we highlight that. But can you answer this question, man? Because I want people to know, what is our completers rate for uh, our programs? Is it each program has a completion rate? Or we do it overall for the program? So okay. overall, we, we have a certain number of students. The, we have uh, basically completers 
Uh, it's, we don't have a complete ratio, uh, but we do have, well, I will say that our graduation rate for completers yeah, that's is, what I'm is about. across the district is higher than the state level, which is already at 90 plus percent. That's what so I'm talking about. Yes. Students who are completers in CTE have a higher, much higher graduation rate. They also have a much higher retention rate when they go off to school because they've been exposed to the content. They already are committed to the content. They're already committed to their subject areas. So they do better, perform better. They have a higher lifetime earning average than other students. So, you know, those are all the things that happen when you expose yourself and allow yourself to, uh, you know, commit to a career path while you're still in high school. Thank you for clarifying and amplifying the question. Because, <laughs> um, you know, when, when we think about education, sometimes people believe that education may be a bridge to nowhere when you complete your 12th grade. But this is saying that we do have a bridge to somewhere. Sure, yes, and we can get anywhere from here. So thank you for the presentation. Thank you, Madam Chair. Absolutely. Any additional questions or comments? All right. Thank you so thank much. You. Okay. At this time, do we can need to allow our students to leave? I was like, can we take a picture like we did last time? Oh, yeah. um, absolutely. If our students can come forward. Uh, no, just yeah. the board. And the, and and the, the principals who have been principals, CTE staff. staff. Everybody come on up. We're going to Great job. Great job, guys. Dr. Witherspoon, thank you so very much for bringing this presentation before us tonight. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. 30 seconds? 30 seconds, yes, sir. <laughs> I'm sorry. I uh, do want to thank uh, certainly our CTE program. And as a reminder, um, February is CTE month. Okay. So we wanted to take both of these meetings uh, to, to <coughs> highlight the student voice and student experience uh, with CTE. And just to piggyback on something Mr. Dingen said. I know at Lower Richland, for example, they those upperclassmen do go back to um, mm -hmm. to share with uh, the, the the underclassmen with, with their C T experiences. And they do they did that. A tour. They did the tour and mm -hmm. I know we've been at some programs also mm -hmm. where they've had career days and experiences mm -hmm. in elementary schools and our high school students would come back. Right. And, and, and look as well. But, but we're certainly appreciative of our CTE program and, and what they do for our young people. Madam Chair. Thank you so very much. We'll now move to 8-2, which is the second reading approval of our 23-24 academic calendar. Dr. Braz Dr. Hagwood. Dr. Hagwood. <laughs> Good evening, Madam Chair, Commissioners, Dr. Witherspoon. The administration recommends second reading approval of the 2023-2024 academic calendar. The administration so recommends. You've heard the recommendation of the administration. What's the pleasure of the board? Move for approval. Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Myers, second by Commissioner Clyburn. We'll now open the floor for question or discussion. Seeing none, hearing none, we will call for the vote. Let the record reflect the vote is unanimous. The second reading approval of the 23-24 academic calendar has been approved. Thank you so much. We'll now move to the Office of Operations with 9-1, a request for a reallocation of the fund balance. Mr. Carlin. Madam Chair, members of the board, Dr. Witherspoon, mm -hmm. the administration requests reallocation of the fund balance. 
We began implementing Richland One Exhales initiative in January 2022 as one way to address the impact that the COVID-19 pandemic has had on the district employees from a social, emotional, and mental health standpoint. Employees have had to cope with the unprecedented circumstances and challenges associated with the pandemic at work and in their personal lives. The administration has requested approval of the reallocation of portion of the fiscal year 22 general fund fund balance. A transfer will be done to schools and departments as part of the one uh, as part of the Richland One exhales an incentive for 300,000. The administration so recommends. You've heard the recommendation of the administration. What's the pleasure of the board? Move for approval. Second. The move by Commissioner Bishop, second by Commissioner Devine. We'll now open the floor for question or discussion. Commissioner Lomanak. Thank you, Chairwoman Harris. Just one question probably to Dr. Witherspoon. Uh, what the folks at the school level, what should they expect to see? I mean, are there a range of things that this money will be used at depending on the school or what? That is correct. What we, the, the intent of this is for school leaders, department heads, to have conversation discussion with their respective staffs on those things that they would. We um, would like to see. Uh, or, or, or do. Uh, we do send out uh, to department heads and so forth uh, some parameters um, that, that certainly they have to stay within, uh, but beyond that or within that, uh, the thought being that there is that collaboration and that working together on um, uh, the use of these funds to, uh, to, to boost uh, you know, what goes on and, 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 and show that support. Thank you, Dr. Witherspoon, mm -hmm. Chairwoman Harris. Mm -hmm. Any additional questions? Okay, seeing none, we will call for the vote. Let the record reflect the request for reallocation of the fund balance has been approved. The vote is unanimous. Thank you Thank so you. much, Mr. Carlin. We'll now move on to the Office of Human Resources with 10-1, which is our Human Resources and Personnel Update by Dr. Long. Good evening, Madam Chair, Board of Commissioners, and Dr. Witherspoon. The personnel and HR updates were provided for you all during executive session as information. Okay, this is an information item. Floor is open for any questions or comments. Seeing none, hearing none, we'll move on to 10-2, which is the hiring of personnel. Dr. Long. The administration recommends hiring the teachers on the attached list for the 2022-2023 and for the 2023-2024 academic year. There are six teachers listed. The administration so recommends. You've heard the recommendation of the administration. What's the pleasure of the board? Move for approval. Second. Been moved by Commissioner Myers, second by Commissioner Devine. We'll open the floor for question or discussion. Seeing none, hearing none, we will call for the vote. Let the record reflect the vote is unanimous. The hiring of personnel has been approved. Thank you so much, Dr. Long. You're welcome. We'll now move on to the office of the board. With 11-1, the Jewel lawsuit. Commissioner Devine. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, at this time, uh, we did get um, an update in the executive session regarding the Jewel lawsuit. Um, and out of that, from what we heard, I do have a motion uh, to put before the body. I move that we approve the Jewel lawsuit settlement terms as discussed in executive session. Second. Okay, there's a motion on the floor to approve the Jewel lawsuit settlement. Um, and it's been properly seconded by Commissioner Bishop. We'll open the floor for question or discussion at this time. Seeing none, hearing none, we will call for the vote. The vote is unanimous to approve um, 
the settlement in the Jewel lawsuit, and for those that are looking a little inquisitive, uh, this was a suit that we joined, I believe, about two years ago, yes. um, and we did prevail. Um, there is a, a, a settlement that has been offered to the district, and the vote that we took just now, which is unanimous, approved, and he's now giving Dr. Witherspoon the authority to take the helms up and make sure that we receive the settlement amount. Just want to clarify that, that it's a settlement that we prevailed on, nothing that we're paying out. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did I do good, Attorney Boykins? Thank you, sir. <laughs> Appreciate it. Appreciate it. We'll now move to 11-2, which is our board report. We'll open the floor at this time. This is an opportunity for a board member to uh, talk about uh, activities that they have been involved in uh, throughout the district. Uh, it can be uh, whatever that you all have been a part of. But we do participate in the chat with the chair as well as lunch buddies and some of the other things that we do on a regular basis. This opportunity allows us to speak to other things that we are doing in the district. So we'll open the floor at this time for any reports from our colleagues. Commissioner Bishop. Just want to be uh, very brief but uh, very, very intentional. I had an awesome opportunity to go to Hyatt Park where they had their black history um, observation and and it was excellent it was black excellence is what they titled it they recognized hbcus black greek letter organizations great leaders and I, it was great to spend time with uh, miss riley and her uh, staff and all the students and even the parents that were in, a, in attendance so I wanted to recognize them tonight thank you any additional board members commissioner lomanac thank you chairwoman harris i just wanted to bring one uh, item to the board's attention. And Dr. Witherspoon, I've e emailed about this a little bit. I, um, I've gotten a couple of classified employees have reached out with concerns that a lot of categories of classified employees are being left out of the incentives for this year. We've got bus drivers who need the, the incentive, especially the longevity bonus. We've got school nurses. But these folks who had a combined, I think, 37, 38 years in this district uh, will not get anything because they work in student nutrition and janitorial staff. So I'd love for us to see if we can find a way to include all of our classified employees in the longevity bonus because I know that we've got huge shortages in bus drivers and school nurses, but we really have shortages in almost everything. So um, I, I, one, I appreciate these employees reaching out. Um, and they cert I want to make this very clear, they certainly were not complaining that other folks in their building were getting a longevity bonus or any other type of bonus, but they just felt left out and I just wanted to bring that to our attention. Thank you, Chairman Harris. Uh -huh. Do you want to respond to that? Yeah, we are, we do take a look at those uh, and some of those are, are budgetary considerations and others, but we do review uh, those incentives um, uh, across the board. Okay. Any additional questions or comments at this time? Board Commissioner Weston. Thank you very much. Had a wonderful opportunity to attend the CAPE program, uh, Dr. Brown's class at Lower Richland High School, um, to be a part of that, to talk about um, from the very beginning, since we were the beginning class um, from 1968 until uh, a part of the Black History program. Um, so thank Dr. Brown for the invitation and the students for being so receptive. Okay. Any additional reports? Commissioner Clyburn? Uh, yes, thank you, Chairwoman Harris. Um, I had the opportunity this weekend to participate in a few um, events, and I just wanted to cover those. Um, the Black History Parade and Festival uh, that was organized by uh, Ms. Ovita Glover. Mm -hmm. um, that was a, a wonderful event. Um, I rode on one of the floats and um, ended up at King Park, um, for the festival, and the festival was a great opportunity to, um, to just see history, um, uh, to see all of the organizations that were participating in um, imparting knowledge and making sure our children and some adults uh, learn some things that they might not know about black history. So, um, you know, we had black vendors out selling um, merchandise. I met a, a young child. Um, who was an, a young entrepreneur selling T-shirts and um, that he designed himself. He actually did the artwork on the T-shirts. And I bought, my child wanted the T-shirts. Couldn't buy the other child a T-shirt because they ran out of the sizes. So I got there too late, I guess. But um, it was just a wonderful. And then food vendors um, were out. And everyone, it was well attended. Everyone was having a great time. So I just wanted to recognize that. 
also participated, that was on Saturday, February 25th. Um, on Sunday, I participated in the Unity Walk and, uh, hmm? oh, Peace Walk, sorry. Uh, but it was for Unity. So it was a Peace Walk um, that I attended, um, uh, organized by Serve and Connect, um, founder and CEO, Cassie Aliyah Ray, um, put all of that together. And we had community partners um, from all across the city. Um, and Walmart was one of the um, vendors as well, or supporters as well. Um, Dr. Witherspoon and um, Commissioner Devine were out there. Uh, so it was a great event. Um, we walked to uh, beyond the Colony Apartments, um, started out um, behind the Clyburn Golf Center. Um, so it was a, a lengthy walk, but we enjoyed it. And um, you know, they recognized uh, some victims of gun violence, um, you know, just in an effort to make our community safer. So that was a great event as well. And I, um, just one more thing, on yesterday, I attended um, an event at Benedict College um, that was hosted um, at Benedict College, uh, where Vice President Kam Kamala Harris uh, presented the South Carolina Broadband Get Connected South Carolina Initiative. Uh, Congressman James Clyburn introduced um, our one and only and fellow Keenan Raider, uh, Principal Dr. Monica Adams, mm -hmm. uh, Principal at Carver Lion Elementary, and she informed those who attended um, of the gains made by Carver Lion and how this initiative would benefit students at Carver Lion. Uh, VP Harris highlighted how this program will make a difference in the lives of Richland One families and the state of South Carolina. So I just wanted to report that $130 million, which is the first portion of $400 million, was set aside from the American Rescue Plan. And that has been allocated for grants where South Carolina residents can apply to receive a $30, month, $30 monthly discount on their internet bills. Um, and that's working towards full connectivity for every South Carolina resident. Carverline students and staff were able to have personal time with VP Harris, mm -hmm. and I spoke with them after that. They were very excited um, about that opportunity, and that's what matters most. Um, so this is an income-based program, and to see if you qualify, um, I have a government website for you to go to, and that's www.getinternet.gov. So please take advantage of this program. And also, um, Benedict College was awarded $3 million as a part of the Connecting Minority Communities Pilot Program created by the 2021 Omnibus, pa Omnibus Package. So thank you so much, Chairman Harris, for that time. Okay, thank you so very much. Any other reports at this time? Commissioner Devine. Thank you, Chairwoman Harris. Do want to report that we did have our annual SCSBA conference uh, about two weeks ago. Um, and we had our new board orientation, we had our chairman's um, workshop, and we also had our regular uh, annual programming for uh, all of our uh, school board members across the state. About 600 plus school board members did attend, and we were appreciative of them coming. I uh, do want to highlight one um, uh, workshop in, in particular. Uh, Dr. Witherspoon presented a workshop on pandemic to progress, and so it was very informative to show other school districts how we're moving from the pandemic phase to now progress and how our scores have uh, been a mixed bag, but more up, more so than down, and how we continue to, as I said at the last meeting, perform miracles. Uh, our staff perform miracles every day. Uh, we move these students from where they are to where we receive them to where uh, their potential and their um, um, potential can be as young people. And so we again want to thank him for that presentation and also sharing with others across the state of South Carolina as well. Uh, today, of course, is the last day for Black History Month. So we do want to um, uh, not forget that, but just um, as this month was emphasized Black History, but we need to continue this uh, throughout the year, the other 11 months of, of the year to keep Black History uh, at the forefront of everything that we do, because Black History is American history, and American history is Black history, and so it's it's not an either or, but it's a both and. So we continue to work together to ensure that all of our uh, African Americans, all of our Black uh, participants, all of our Black folk get uh, recognized for the work that we do uh, across this state and across this country. Uh, we're all in this together. Uh, there's a quote by uh, Martin Luther King that says, "It is a real sense." Uh, all life is interrelated. All men are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. 
Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. I can never be what I ought to be until you are what you ought to be. And you can never be what you ought to be until I am what I ought to be. This is the interrelated structure of reality. And that's by uh, Brother Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And so this just goes to show that we're all interconnected and related and tied together. And I do want to note, uh, Chairwoman Harris did uh, note this in a workshop she had, I think, in 2020 uh, with the South Carolina Black School Board Caucus um, section, uh, section of, of South Carolina Law 59-29-55. Talks about um, African American uh, history uh, being taught in the state of South Carolina. And so uh, back in 1989, 1990, we had our first uh, law uh, passed that we instruct our students on black history. Uh, in the area of social studies. And so the State Department is mandated by law to teach black history, African-American history in the state of South Carolina. And I hope, and I hope, that we continue to support that law uh, in this state uh, going forward. Again, Section 59, 29, 55, and it talks about implementing black history uh, in our studies across this state. So I did want to make that known. Then lastly, um, again, uh, Sister Clyburn has already talked about the different things that we've done. Uh, the only thing you left out was the winter game day. We had an Arden Elementary that we attended together, but everything else we we, we attended uh, together. So again, kudos again for the state walk. I mean for the Peace Walk in North Columbia. Again, Carver Lion get an opportunity to meet our uh, vice president. Those are student government students, and then I am proud. Let me just be real clear. And I think we all are, but I am super proud to be a part of a organization that exposes all of our students to options and opportunities across this local area and across the state, even across the nation, even internationally, as our students have traveled uh, across this country, across Canada, to other areas. And Dr. Witherspoon, as we're looking at our budget, I would encourage us to look at the Renaissance program. And if we can bring the Renaissance program back, I think it's a great opportunity for our young people to learn again about African American history, where we came from to where we are today. So I would encourage us to look at that program. Let's get those ideas flowing again, and possibly start some more international traveling again, uh, as we as we continue to expose our children and prepare them for a global society, because we know that these young people will not only leave this local area and this state, but they'll travel internationally. Mm -hmm. um, I know some students right now uh, that have traveled more internationally at their age than I've ever traveled. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us have ever traveled. Mm -hmm. But that's a good thing. That means, again, the world is interconnected. And so we want to make sure those options and opportunities for all those students remain. So with that, Madam Chair, um, I appreciate it. So thank you, and I yield my time back. Thank you so very much. Any additional reports from any board member? Okay, let me be brief with mine. Um, a lot of you have a little box of chocolate there um, that was from me to you all on Valentine's Day. Um, just in case the meeting went long, I didn't want anybody getting into trouble, so you at least had some chocolate to take home to your significant other. So you can enjoy that now, but that's just a little something from me. You don't have to put it on your ethics report because it's not even $5. Um, but I wanted to share that. Certainly want to thank um, Commissioner Bishop for... Uh, caring on the work while we've been out um, due to the passing of our brother. I um, want to thank um, this team, Dr. Witherspoon's team, for making sure that our work session went forth on Friday without a hitch. Um, and all of those that presented at that session, I have not had a chance to catch up on all of that because I'm still trying to breathe um, and eat a lot of food that I still am receiving. Um, no more food, please. I love y'all, but no more food. Um, but want to thank you all for the work session um, that you all did, and, and Commissioner Bishop for taking over the realms, and Eva being there to make sure that everything in our office stayed on track um, for the board. I know there were several events that we were invited to be a part of and speak at and whatnot. I was not able to fulfill those obligations, but Commissioner Bishop did step in where he could. He had a full schedule himself, but he was able to make some of those events for us. I want to thank him. Um, I want to thank the Richland One family, as I've shared with Dr. Witherspoon and my colleagues. Uh, the, the outpouring of love and support to my family has been overwhelming, literally, um, from Richland One. I cannot think of a corner or a crevice that has not been covered, um, whether it's a card, a meal, or something 
um, just to let me know that you were thinking about us in the passing of our brother, which was sudden, very unexpected, but it was God's will. And we have to uh, accept the things that he allows. Um, but I want to thank you because, Richland One, to my family, you showed a level of love and support to me and them that just blew their minds. And to hear my mom say, you're right, Richland One really is family. You all showed that the, the moment you came and just sat with her and talked to her and my family, it meant a lot. The flowers. I know all of you that did everything um, because I look at those cards daily. But I want to I say on behalf of my family that we are indebted to all of you because you made a very tough situation bearable. And as I told Dr. Witherspoon, they were a little concerned about me coming back early. And I told him I have to get back to what keeps me busy. And what keeps me busy is Richland One. So I'm glad to be back. Um, but at the same time, I'm also thankful to even my colleagues for the love that each one of you showed to me individually um, during this time to make this uh, time a little bit more bearable for us. Um, on today, I did have the opportunity to attend the CTE Apprentice and Internship uh, Signing Day over at Hayward. And Dr. Witherspoon, it was a tremendous job. I hate that Mr. Dinkins is not here for me to give him kudos once again to his team, but to see 122 of our students signing job contracts is major. You can clap. <laughs> and I, I know Dr. Witherspoon is probably going to talk about this, but you know, sometimes our story, and I say this all the time, it's not told, but I'm telling you, you don't have to look far. Our students sit here today and they told the story. We even had one come back to tell the story. Um, but to see those students signing contracts on various levels, um, we say kudos. And, and even a plea out here to other businesses that want to get involved, please, please make yourselves available to our students. They would love the opportunity to, to do an internship or an apprenticeship program with you all. So kudos to you all on that. Also on Saturday, I had the opportunity to attend what I consider a very important meeting, being that I live in the rural portion of this district, and that is the Lower Richland Emergency Preparedness Meeting. And as a lot of you know, and I know I, I preach this all the time to Aaron and Jamie because they've been around me the longest, the Lower Richland is a very unique area. Um, a lot of resources are not there. Um, as other places have. Um, but to be in a meeting that we discuss things such as the thousand year flood. And as a lot of you know, we, we experienced that and we were at the hymns of that as a district. And one of the main reasons that we couldn't reopen our schools, Dr. Witherspoon, was because every bridge that led into Lower Richland was out. Um, and this is not what we heard, this is what we visually saw. Um, you hear us laugh about the Henry the helicopter story. That's because we went up in a chopper to assess the damages. And we could not reopen Richland One for a matter of time because our students were cut off from support, from resources, from things as small as simple as water. Had to be bused into, uh, uh, trucked into our, 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 our high school there to make sure families had water, drinking water and whatnot. But this emergency preparedness meeting talked about three things, which is very near and dear to my heart, Dr. Witherspoon, and to my colleagues, and something for us just to consider. We talked about wildfires and the, 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 the chances of that happening in a lower Richland area because it's very wooded. We talked about uh, the flooding situation right now. We have a dam in the lower Richland area that has been breached, and it's flooded out. And there are roads right now where our children live that are not accessible. And then we also talked about uh, chemical exposure. As you all know, there are a lot of plants in that area, just to name a few, International Paper, uh, Snyder, Weston House, which is a a, a nuclear plant, and several others. And I just think that it's important, Dr. Witherspoon, that we all work with um, this, this preparedness group. This is being piloted through um, USC, has a team that they've put on this. There's a grant that has been written uh, for us to create some things that are gonna be necessary. And I, I do feel that at some point, our schools are gonna be very resourceful. Some of the things we talked about are the, the siren alarms, that if you can hear the siren, you need to call this number to get information because you may be in danger of where the wildfire is and things of that nature. Communication is very, very, what do you wanna call it, Ms. Weston down there? It's very limited in the Lower Richland area. So things that we have to consider is if a wildfire broke out and we've got loved ones that live down a dirt road that may be impacted, how do we get that message to them? So one of the things that they did ask us in the meeting and we had state representatives as well is how does the district 
you know, do our communication, what things we could possibly tap into, that if there's an issue, how we could hone in on connecting to those families through the district's resources or whatnot. So it is a conversation that I would like to have at a later time with Dr. Whispoon and my colleagues on how we can better work with the Lower Richland community on our emergency preparedness efforts because it's not a matter of it happening. Sometimes it's just a matter of when. We thought the thousand-year flood would have never happened, but it came and it did. And, and Dr. Whispoon, you know as well as I know, we were in there fixing breakfast for it because Lower Richland was being used as a shelter. Uh, so there, there are some opportunities there that we would like to talk some more to the district about how we can help uh, support those efforts there. Um, that concludes my report. Again, thank you to everyone for all of the love that you showed to my family. We greatly appreciate it. Um, and at this time, we'll move on to last, I'm sorry, Commissioner Devine. Thank you. I forgot to add this. I'm sure Dr. Willis mentioned in his uh, superintendent's report. Uh, I want to thank um, uh, Ms. York and her team and others for the master class, Carrie Abel and his team oh, yeah. for the master class that we had on last Thursday. Uh, we had uh, the incomparable Regina Bell, uh, Kirk Whalum, Chris Walker, and Bob Jones who came to this district. Uh, Bob James, I'm sorry. Ooh, let me get that right. Yes, Bob, Bob, Bob James. And so, again, I'm glad to be a part of an organization that exposes our kids mm -hmm. to options and opportunities mm -hmm. that you would not get. These are things that our young people typically won't get, but we are appreciative to the staff for what you do every day to ensure that all of our students get those things that they need. And to this administrative team uh, as well, thank you, Dr. Witherspoon, for allowing us to be in Richland One. It could have gone somewhere else, and again, we're thankful to, again, Mr. Abel and his folk that helped put this on. And then, of course, to Auntie Karen, who is a mm -hmm. um, District 1 uh, cheerleader supporter of this mm -hmm. district. And we greatly appreciate her partnership uh, um, um, uh, with this district. So, again, we, we say thank you. Thank you, Chairwoman Harris. Yes, sir. Thank you so very much. At this time, if there are no other board reports. We'll now move on to the last portion of our meeting on tonight, which is the Office of the Superintendent, and that is the Superintendent's Report by Dr. Witherspoon. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. In January, we recognized seven Richland One High School seniors who had been named National Merit Scholarship semifinalists. We have learned that all seven students have advanced as finalists in the scholarship competition. Scholarships winners will be announced during the spring and summer, and congratulations again to our finalists. Last Thursday, just to echo Mr. Devine's, uh, Commissioner Devine's comments, we did uh, uh, hold the annual Legends Masterclass in partnership with the Honor Karen Foundation. And again, uh, thanks to Karen Alexander Banks for her team for bringing the, those legendary artists to Richland One to share with our students. Uh, and they are now our Regina Bell, Kirk Whalum, Bob James, Chris Walker are now honorary members of the Richland One family thanks to a special proclamation uh, from our board. Kudos to the students who performed during the master class. Uh, it was held at AC Flora. Thank you to, again, Mr. Abel, Mr. Graham, our visual and performing arts teachers, principals, student nutrition staff, and all others who helped make that event a success. This morning, as Chairwoman Harris indicated, we celebrated our career and technical education team with their internship and apprenticeship signing day. Uh, over 100 students, again, uh, will have an opportunity to get their work-based learning experiences as interns and apprentice, apprentices uh, with various organizations, City of Columbia, here in Richland One, local businesses. Uh, and some of our students that were recognized today couldn't be at this ceremony because they were in their internships or apprenticeships, uh, while others will begin this summer. And kudos again to our CTE team and our businesses. Um, and great opportunities. Again, I want to congratulate our 13 varsity basketball teams that made it to the state playoffs this year. Mm -hmm. While this year, unfortunately, we won't have any teams competing for state championship titles this weekend, our teams and coaches can be proud of their outstanding seasons. Congratulations to all of our teams, our students, coaches, and their parents. Let's give them a round of And as we do during um, this budget, as we gear up for the budget season, uh, we hold series of meetings uh, to get input from stakeholders uh, as we work on the 2023-2024 general fund budget. 
First input session was held on February 13th at Gasden Elementary. The second was held yesterday, February 27th, at Meadowfield Elementary. And the third will be held next Monday, March 6th, 6 p.m. at Burton Pack Elementary. Students, parents, staff, community members are invited and encouraged to attend. On Saturday evening, March 4th, we look forward to honoring the four newest members of the Richland One Hall of Fame, Lieutenant Colonel Charity Adams Early, posthumously, Mrs. Ella McRant, Dr. Carlos Smith, and Coach Bobby Young. Congratulations to the honorees and their families. The district is accepting applications for two scholarships named in honor of two former Richland One superintendents. The $2,500 Dr. John R. Stevenson Music Scholarship will be awarded to a senior who plans to pursue post-secondary study in music. And the $1,000 Dr. Percy A. Mack Leadership Scholarship will be awarded to a senior who demonstrates leadership skills and potential, as well as well-rounded involvement in co-curricular activities. April 7th is the application deadline for both scholarships, and details are posted on our website at richlandone.org. Thursday, March 2nd, is Read Across America Day. Schools and districts across the country will celebrate reading with special programs and activities. March 2nd will also kick off my, sec my 2023 Superintendent Book Club Challenge. To join the book club, all students have to do is read, read, read. Book club members are invited to a special reading celebration, and there will be recognition and prizes for the school, the class, and the students who read the most books. As an incentive to encourage them to become members of my book club, if students in pre-kindergarten through eighth grade collectively read 750,000 books by May 5th, I will let the top 10 elementary students and the top 10 secondary students dunk me in a dunking booth. It was taped to the wall last year. Yeah. <laughs> I am confident <laughs> that they will meet or exceed this goal. So I'm getting ready to be dunked, and I hope the water is not too cold. Mm -hmm. And we had to raise the number Dr. Hagwood shared with me uh, because I think the number was a half million last half million books, somewhere in that, that range. 250. And they, they went way beyond that, so we had to up the ante a little bit this year. Uh, but again, uh, we look forward to the book club. Students, get ready to read. I'll get ready to be dunked. And um, we will continue to have a grand old time. <laughs> Madam Chair, that concludes uh, my report this evening. Thank you, Dr. Witherspoon, for your report. At this time, we'll open up the floor for any questions or comments on any item that Dr. Witherspoon spoke to. Okay. Seeing none, hearing none. We have one announcement before adjournment. Our next regular scheduled meeting of the Richland One Board of Commissioners will be held on March the 14th of 2023 at 7 p.m. at C.A. Johnson High School at 2219 Barnerville Road, Columbia, South Carolina, 29203. If there's no objection from the board, we can consider ourselves dismissed. Y'all have a good evening. Mm -hmm.